Uh, greetings in the matchless name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. It is, again, my joy and pleasure to share the Word of God with you. Uh, last week being the day of Pentecost, you know, we saw about uh, how Holy Spirit was poured uh, in the early church uh, and how the kingdom reality would, was brought into this world through Holy Spirit. See, I was telling you that God's heart is about family and kingdom. So, been saying this so many times now. Right? And what is God's plan? God's plan is, is to, uh, you know, in the beginning, God created heavens and the earth, right? So meaning this triune God, okay? Who, who alone, who exists, who exists all by himself. So God doesn't need anything to exist, right? So he is a truly self-existing one. So how did God exist? They existed as Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. So don't get this uh, messed up. Father is not the Son. Son is not the Father. Father is not the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit is not the Son. Okay? There is distinction between them, which what makes the oneness so beautiful right uh, so when we say God is one you know the word is a card the two shall become one the same word right God is one meaning then Adam and Eve the two shall become one so they are two personalities but becoming one how is that possible how Adam and Eve can become one because God, who is three, but basically one, right? So we are talking about relational unity, not numerical unity, okay? Many people are saying, you know, there is just one personality and he speaks that whatever he speaks, that's the word. And the breath is the spirit. It's just one person. Uh, actually, that is wrong. You know, the early church fought tooth and toenail to preserve the, you know, idea of Trinity. Uh, I have dealt in detail about these things elsewhere, so I don't want to go in to those things. But I want you to know that there are three distinct persons. Okay? When I mean three distinct persons, I mean Father has a will. We find that in Scripture. Then we also find in Scripture that Son has a will. Meaning... He says, I have not come to do my own will, but to do the will of my father. So he, is sub he has come to do the will of the father, but he says, I am not here to do my own will. That means he has a will. Okay. But with that will, he decides to do the will of the father. That is where this whole oneness come. Right. Because he is using his will to do the will of the father. Then we also find in Corinthians. Spirit has a will. So, you should understand this. Spirit has a will. So, their will is intertwined by love. Right? So, mutual, mutual indwelling, mutual indwelling, other-centered, other-centered, 
all these things are happening because they exercise the will to do these things right as a result this whole coexistence is called we call god as one being one being god is one being but three persons living in union they are not individually god okay they are not individually god apart from each other that is what is called tritheism believing in three god we don't believe uh, in three god meaning you know father son holy spirit and uh, when they are disconnected from each other okay we call him as god we call him as god we call him as god uh, so now we have three gods this is tritheism this is not trinity this is tritheism believing in three gods which is not what our faith is our faith is strictly monotheistic monotheistic our god is one okay one being one being so how is that being the being itself is father son and holy spirit living in union but there are three distinct persons right uh so this union this interpenetrating mutual indwelling other centered self emptying love when we say god is we are talking about being right when we say god is love or god is holy whenever we say is we are talking about his essence his being right uh so the father son and holy spirit is love when we say god is love what we mean is that what is happening within the three of them that is love that's where we can look at say oh this is love this is holiness Are you guys getting what i'm telling seeing holiness that way really changes everything right god is holy god is love you know god is just god is pure so he, you know he is father son and holy spirit what is the plan and purpose what is the plan and purpose of god the plan and purpose of god is to not to take to heaven okay right you should understand this is not the plan okay this is the plan this is not the plan what is not the plan take people to heaven that's not the plan why god created man the creative purpose and the redemptive purpose are one and the same right so the creative purpose is not god telling adam adam uh, i have created this whole world if you make the right choice you can escape from this world and go to heaven that is not god's plan for mankind right what was god's plan god's plan is is heaven on earth okay and how he wants to do it he wants it wants to do it through mature sons so when i say sons you know it's not gender based it's both male and female just like how bride we are bride of christ both male and female are the bride of christ th- that way okay it just like how jesus is a mature son you know so this heaven on earth is supposed to happen through mature sons through mature sons sons who have attained maturity so they are supposed to bring heaven on earth so this uh this ceremony or plan of presenting the mature sons okay presentation presentation of mature sons presentation of mature sons is called 
അഡോപ്ഷൻ ഇൻ ദ ബൈബിൾ ദിസ് ഈസ് വൈ ഗോഡ് ക്രിയേറ്റഡ് മാൻ ഗോഡ് ഡിഡ് നോട്ട് ക്രിയേറ്റ് മാൻ ടു ഗോ ടു ഹെവൻ സോ പ്രീ ഡെസ്റ്റിനേഷൻ റൈറ്റ് പ്രീ ഡെസ്റ്റിനേഷൻ ഇസ് നോട്ട് അബൌട്ട് ഹെവൻ ആൻഡ് ഹെൽ നോ വെയർ ഇൻ ദ ബൈബിൾ ബൈബിൾ ടോക്സ് അബൌട്ട് പ്രീ ഡെസ്റ്റിനേഷൻ ആസ് എ മാറ്റർ ഓഫ് ഹെവൻ ആൻഡ് ഹെൽ ദിസ് ഹോൾ തിങ് ഓഫ് who are the elect of god who will go to heaven who are all elected to go to heaven rest all are you know condemned to go to hell it's just not in scriptures this whole concept of elect and predestination with regard to heaven and hell is just not in scriptures yeah it might be shocking or you you, you might be saying you are questioning calvinism there are so many calvinists out there i'm sorry yeah it's just not in scripture right uh you go study the word predestination go every place where it comes about predestination and see whether it is about heaven and hell i will show you a couple of places right now uh come with me to ephesians 1 ephesians 1 gives the story right gives the story that is much much before genesis 1 if genesis 1 gives you the how ephesians 1 gives you the why let's read from verse 3 blessed be the god and father of our lord jesus christ okay we are not talking about any god we are talking about a god who looks like exactly like the father of jesus christ this is so important our image of god should be like the father of jesus christ jesus said right if you have seen me you have seen the father any image of god which is not looking like jesus is a false image that we are worshiping you might find those images in scripture itself but it's still a false image that's a very blasphemous statement to make but that's exactly what hebrews 1 1 to 3 says he is the expressed image of the invisible god of his nature and character so there might be different portraits of how god is throughout scriptures because revelation of god was progressive people's understanding the way they see god was progressive and god still came and met them where they are and worked with their view of him spoke to them their language and he progressively moved so there are multiple images of god in scripture but when jesus came into the picture and said if you have seen me you have seen the father basically he says anything that does not look like me even though it is in your own scripture you have to question it you guys getting what i'm telling that is not a complete revelation it's a part by part revelation it's just a glimpse it's just a glance of who god is it's not a complete picture the complete picture is revealed in jesus christ does that mean we can throw the old testament no 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 narrative is so important narrative is so important we need to know uh you know because in the narrative in israel's rebellion we see our rebellious nature you know portrayed in so many ways so that you know if if we learn from them we can avoid a lot of heartache so so important so important narrative is so important uh but the image is the father of jesus christ blessed be the god the father of jesus christ so what has he done who has blessed us with every spiritual blessings in heavenly places in christ just as he chose us in him before the foundation of the world my goodness verse 5 is what i want you to notice okay having having predestined us predestined us to adoption right this word is huothesia having predestined us to adoption as adoption as sons the word huyo right is the word sons huyos meaning mature son 
having predestined us to adoption by Jesus Christ okay according to the good pleasure of his will to the praise of his glory of his grace which he made us accepted in the beloved so this is the plan of god the plan of god is we are predestined for adoption as sons by jesus christ this is the plan of god okay Th this is about you know that we would become mature sons and god would present us as mature sons to this world through which ruling and reigning will happen just like jesus we would be mature sons knowing the father just as jesus knows the father we would also know the father and we would reflect him in pure purity power and authority and extend the father's kingdom over all the earth so predestined for adoption so this adoption is not the legal adoption that we are talking about where somebody who is not the child is taken from outside and brought inside through legal paper paperwork they are adopted that is not this concept this is a you know a greek a hebrew culture that was existing where their own sons you know when they reach maturity there are different words used technon meaning children right whoever is born of god are the children of god are the technon of god then you have the word nepios babe pedo that's also something like babe right and then you have uh huios which is a mature son you know i have dealt these things in details in growing in uh sonship in a message so you can see that so you are you are born as a technon you know you are a babe immature like right? nepios and pedo and then huios a mature son so the plan and purpose of god is that you would be you would be transformed into a mature son this is about predest this is what predestination is all about C come with me to uh romans 8 verse 29 for whomever he foreknew he predestined this is the second place where the word predestined is used predestined to be confirmed to the image of his huios son that he might be the first born among many brethren so why there you get have it right predestined to be conformed to the image of his son image of his mature son jesus so that he might become the first born first born among many brethren see jesus has to become the elder brother who is a very mature son who knows the father and god wanted to have many sons just like jesus he wanted to expand the family and expand the kingdom through mature sons that's why he created us that's what predestination is about where do you find heaven and hell in these passages no it's just not there you know come with me to hebrews for it was fitting for him for whom are all things by whom are all things in bringing many sons to glory in bringing many huios okay in bringing many sons to glory this is god's plan come with me to romans 8 again so then verse 30 whomever he predestined those he called whomever he called he justified whomever he justified he also has glorified so bringing many sons to glory this is the end results of pre destination 
bringing many sons to glory bringing many sons to glory doesn't mean bringing many sons to heaven unfortunately whenever somebody goes to dies you know dies and goes to heaven they say oh they have entered into glory uh but that is not how you know jesus uses the term you know or the scripture uses the term when it says bringing many sons to glory i will just show you what it's all about so predestination is about adop- adoption adoption is about presentation of mature sons okay this is the plan and purpose of god right come with me to ephesians again read ephesians 1:5 in the amplified for he foreordained us predestined planned in love for us destined us planned in love for us to be adopted what is the word there to be revealed see to be revealed adoption is not about you know making somebody who is outside to come in no 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 adoption is the ceremony of a son who is go- growing from nepios and become a huios when he becomes a huios when he is able to reflect the father in in nature in responsibility in authority in power uh, basically when he is ready to receive the father's inheritance and steward the inheritance you, you, you see even when you are a technon or a nepios you have an inheritance inheritance belongs to you but you don't have access to it are you getting what i'm telling get this thing very clear you might be an epios you might be a babe you have an inheritance but you cannot access it access your inheritance why you are still an epios but when you become a huios you not only have an inheritance by birth you can access the inheritance okay so huyothesia presentation of mature sons is about god bringing us into maturity so that we can access the inheritance this is god's plan and purpose this is what predestination about this is what god's heart is about you know unfortunately the church has missed this big picture and still talking about going to heaven you know the gospel has been oh how many of you want to go to heaven accept jesus you don't find that in scripture you don't find that in scripture god is not finding people to go to heaven that is not what god is looking for mature sons who would reflect him in nature in power in authority just as jesus did having predestined meaning to be revealed see that is what uh, adoption is to be revealed as keep these every word that i am saying keep the, keep it in mind then as i build the message you will know how all these things pulls together revealed or revelation of sons okay that's what adoption is adoption is revelation of mature sons that's what adoption is <sighs> have so we read in amplified adopted meaning revealed as his own children through jesus christ in accordance with the purpose of his will because it pleased him and was his kind intent the father as a will has a purpose which he did it because of his kind intent so what is the will what is the purpose what is the intent intention of the father adoption meaning rev- revealing sons mature sons huios this is the plan of the father okay and that plan was supposed to happen through through jesus christ 
through Jesus Christ. See, this whole plan of adoption was supposed to happen through Jesus Christ. Read with me in one more version. Uh, New Living Translation. God decided in advance. God decided in advance to adopt us into his own family by bringing us to himself through Jesus Christ. Bringing us to himself through Jesus Christ. No one comes to the Father except through me. Okay? So, Jesus, through Jesus Christ, we get to know the Father. Right? You can never be a mature son unless you know the Father. Right? We have to know the Father. Knowing Him is eternal life. Knowing the Father and knowing the Son is eternal life. Let's just read that verse. You know, John 17, 3. John 17, 3. This is the only place in the Bible where eternal life is defined. Eternal life is not going to heaven. John 17, 3. And this is eternal life that you may know you. Right? Jesus is praying. This is eternal life that they may know you. The only true God. And Jesus Christ whom you have sent. This is eternal life. This is eternal life. To know the Father and the Son whom you have sent. Because there is so many ways in the Old Testament that they were knowing God. But that is, that is not eternal life. That did not bring eternal life to them. That just brought death to them because they were seeing through their broken lens of who God is. And they were relating to him like that. And that always brought death. Be it anyone for that matter. No one knows God except the Son who is in the bosom of the Father. So knowing the Father through the person of Jesus Christ is eternal life. So through this whole adoption, how we can become mature is through Jesus Christ. So through Jesus Christ, we get to know the Father. In terms of relationship, we, we get to know him. And not only in terms of relationship. See, you should understand something. So when Jesus Christ, he is the word. He is from the Father. Right? The word was with God. Word, word. Word was face to face with God. You know, in the beginning was the word. The word was God. The word was with God. Right? The word became flesh. And the flesh got glorified. The flesh got glorified. Meaning what? What does this, what does this really mean? The word became flesh and flesh got glorified. So the flesh... Meaning humanity. Humanity. God glorified. Meaning humanity is included in divinity. Wow. Right here you have the gospel. Flesh is included in the Trinity. Humanity is included in the Trinity. Father, Son, Holy Spirit. In that, now, flesh, 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 glorified, glorified flesh is included. Meaning, the humanity is included into the Trinity. So, Step one of adoption is done. Listen, listen carefully. Adoption has to happen through Jesus Christ. This is step one. There are basically two steps. I'll tell you. This is step one. Step one is adoption through Jesus Christ. That is bringing us to himself. How he came. He is the word, right? He is the word that holds all things together. In him, all things consist. Colossians 1. Okay? Everything. He is the word through which he's created everything. So that word became flesh. That means whatever happens to the flesh, 
is happening to the entire creation because everything is held together by the flesh. So flesh is glorified. So when flesh was glorified, the entire humanity was taken into divinity. And this inclusion into the family, okay, which is a step one of adoption, then the revealing happens. First, we have to be, you know, in the family, right? That happens through Jesus Christ. We cannot pull ourselves by the bootstrap and take us into Trinity. We can never reach there, right? Uh, only one person from the Trinity has to become us and take us there. Man trying to reach God through his own efforts is religion. And incarnation is a death blow to all sorts of religion. Let me put it this way. Religion is man reaching God. Incarnation is God reaching man and pulling him inside the circle. So word became flesh and flesh got glorified, meaning we are included into the Trinity right now. Okay, through the person of Jesus. So that plan of adoption, plan of adoption, which is the predestined purpose, which is the predestined purpose of the Father, has already been fully accomplished, done by the Son through his death, burial, resurrection, and ascension. Right? Through his death, burial, and resurrection, and ascension, Jesus basically came into flesh, identified ourselves, himself with us, right? He became sin, you know, he became curse. He tasted death for us all. So through his death, burial and resurrection and ascension, basically Jesus has fulfilled the plan of adoption, which is the predestined, predestined purpose of the father. Jesus has already fulfilled, okay? Father has planned and purposed. Jesus has accomplished that plan and purpose. But you are saying, ah, really? Is it already accomplished in the sun? But it doesn't look like. Okay. Fantastic. Trinity. That's where you find Trinity. So you have the, you, you have the father and you have the son. That's where comes the spirit. Right? Come with me to Romans 8. Finally, my introduction is over and I'm coming to the spirit of adoption. Ah, verse 14. Romans 8, 14 onwards. Okay, Romans 8, 14. What does it say? For as many as are led by the spirit of God, they are the huyos of God. As many as are led by the spirit of God, they are the huyos of God. Verse 15, for you did not receive the spirit of bondage again to fear, but you received the spirit. This is 15, 8, 15. You have received the spirit of adoption. Wow. Huyo Thesia. This is step two. Adoption through Jesus Christ. Step one, fulfilled. Now we have the spirit of adoption, right? We have the spirit of adoption. You, you know, you did not receive the spirit of uh, bondage again to fear, but you received the spirit of adoption by whom we cry out, by whom we cry out, take us to heaven. No, no, no. By whom we cry out, Abba, Father. Wow. Wow. Right there is the gospel. See, Jesus came. Good for him, right? Word became flesh. He is a heavenly being, came into flesh, 
related to the father whatever he did fantastic right but he is still at the end of the day he is jesus oh what does he know about what we are going through he is still outside us and he lived as a man and he went through right you know all we can is follow the footsteps follow the footsteps of jesus but trying to follow the footsteps of jesus to act like jesus to be like jesus in our own strength that's where all sorts of nonsense happen we know that that doesn't going that is not going to happen ever but so just jesus coming living a life that he lived and he said follow me is still not going to happen because you find that time and again disciples failing 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 they were with jesus jesus taught them king kingdom but they did not get kingdom they did not understand it they just were thinking something else why they did not have the spirit in them it is the spirit in jesus of nazareth who revealed the father to him who brought the kingdom available to jesus and he operated that that the disciples did not have when they were with jesus so as much as they were with the physical jesus it did not benefit them as much as it should have been as we think but when the spirit was poured when the spirit was poured see you should understand incarnation took humanity to god pentecost pouring of the spirit brought god into humanity Do you guys get it incarnation word became flesh flesh got glorified now humanity is into trinity fantastic we are included but still we are here but when the spirit of adoption was poured when the spirit of adoption was poured during the day of pentecost now god is in humanity not humanity is in god god himself is in humanity so when he is talking about the holy spirit you know uh he st- uh, what what did he say john john 7 um come we did john uh, 14 verse 23 verse 23 if anyone loves me he will keep my word and my father will love him and we will come to him we will come to him and make our home with him well we the father and the son we will come to us or jesus was talking right we will come to you hmm and make our home mone dwelling place you might be thinking when did jesus start started speaking malayalam right mone uh dwelling place and make our home with you my goodness how does it happen just two verses down you know the holy spirit whom the father will send right so how is this coming happen we will come to you this come to you how is this thing happening through the holy spirit through the holy spirit through the holy spirit the father and the son dwells in us right that's what the spirit of adoption is and uh back to romans 8 let's read from verse 14 the mature children of god see son huios mature children of god are those who are moved by the impulses of the holy spirit impulses of the holy spirit they are not moved by the impel, impulse of the flesh 
but they are moved by the impulses of the Holy Spirit. And you did not receive the spirit of bondage. This is so important to get it. You did not receive the spirit of bondage. What bondage it's talking about? It's not talking about bondage to some nonsense like drinking, uh, smoking and this and that, even though those things are bad and you're not supposed to have those things. Here, it's talking about another nonsense, which is religious spirit, right? You did not receive the spirit of religious duty. Oh, ouch. You did, religious duty is called the spirit of bondage in the Bible. You did not receive the spirit of religious duty leading you back into the fear of never being good enough. Fear of never being good enough. What is to be led by the Spirit of God? You know, it, it, it's explained very clearly here. Whenever you are constantly under the fear of not being good enough, you are under the spirit of religious duty. And you're not under the spirit of adoption, right? And you can never become mature when you are under the spirit of religious duty because the religious spirit will never bring you to a place where you're feeling you're good enough. You're good enough to receive the inheritance. You're not enough. You're not enough. You're not enough. You're not enough. You have to do more, do more, do more is, is the constant voice of the religious duty. And that just leads you into fear of never being good enough. And that's, this, that's how the spirit of bondage works. Wow. Just this one line explains the whole problem of religion out there, including Christian religion. Right? And uh, yeah, you did not receive the spirit of religious duty leading you back into the fear of never being good enough. But you have received... The spirit of full acceptance, wow, spirit of adoption, he, here he has translated as spirit of full acceptance. Full acceptance, enfolding you into the family of God and you will never feel orphaned. You will never feel orphaned. Wow. You will never feel orphaned. For as he rises up within us, as he rises up within us, our spirits, our spirits join the Holy Spirit in saying the words of tender affection, beloved father or Abba father. I'm going to read you the next verse, 16th verse, which is super important. Get it. For the Holy Spirit makes God's real to us. He whispers into our innermost being you are God's beloved child. Wow. See how the triune God is working in the plan of adoption. The father's heart is to include you in the family so that you can know him as Jesus knows him through the spirit. And you will also become a mature son in representing the father just like Jesus represented in every aspect, in every aspect. He wanted to bring many sons to glory so that he would be the firstborn among many brethren. So just like Jesus in every aspect, you know, you should also be, you know, partakers of his divine nature, love, power, wisdom and everything. And, and all the more about everything, partake of Zoe, God quality life, partake of that very essence of God, Zoe, and represent him to the world. That is God, Father, God, Father God's heart for us. My goodness. Oh, which religion tells you this? 
Every religion talks about, including Christian religion says, God is seated up there on the throne. He gives you certain do's and don'ts. If you do these things, you will be blessed. If you don't do these things, you know, you will be, you know, cast into hell and you will be punished forever. Or, you know, right now you'll be punished through Corona and locusts. That's, a, that's just, that's how religion thinks. But that's not here what we're talking about. We're talking about a father who wants the son who creates us in his own image and wants us, wants us to know him and gives us all the access, gives us all the access, just like how the son has the access to the father. We have the same access. That's what righteousness is. The Holy Spirit will convict you of righteousness because I go to the father and you see me no more. That's what righteousness is about. So that we will have the same access to the father because we are loved by the same father. Oh, that's what the spirit of adoption is, spirit of full acceptance. They, he is supposed to make God's fatherhood real to us. Because at the root of every malfunction of mankind is he doesn't know the father. That is the sin, the sin. He doesn't know the father. And whenever you don't know the father, there are only two options, right? Whenever you don't know the father, which is the sin, Nobody knows the father. There are only two options. Rebellion. Religion. These are the only two options when you don't know the father. And the spirit of adoption is poured into a rebellious nature and into a religion, religious mindset to reveal, to whisper in our innermost being, hey, you are God's beloved child. You are God's beloved child. So, because the triune God, you know, when they want to include us into the Trinity, okay? See, we are included into the Trinity through the work of Jesus, right? Through the glorification of flesh in humanity. He is our corporate man, representative of us all. So, he has been included. He came, tasted our sin, became sin, you know, <gasps> my God, my God, why did you forsake me? He tasted our darkness. He tasted, he became sin. He became curse. He became everything. Finally, he died. You know, he tasted death. He partook of our death. He tasted our death. And God raised him from the dead and, you know, brought us back. So basically he met and, you know, met us in our darkness and brought us into the Trinity. But, uh, but still, but still, but still, I want you to know that our will is very much intact. The triune God never messes up with our will. Yes, we are, see, we are a very complex being. Ah, we are not like car, mechanical car, and you take it to the garage and say, there is some problem, there is some noise. And the guy says, oh, this is this thing. And he takes that part and he shows, see, this coil has been burnt. And he throws it out and he takes another part and he puts it and you're fine. We are not like that. Our thing cannot be shifted like that. If God does like that to us in our belief systems, you know, he would be violating our free will. We will not be free beings at all when he does that. So we are included right smack into the Trinity, but still we are holding on to our blindness. We are still holding on to our, our own, you know, selfish agendas of how, Things have to be done and everything. That's the reason, even though Jesus died, rose again, glorified everything, you know, it looks nothing is happening because God is not interfering with man's free will. And when he, the moment he does that, that's it. You know, we cease to be human beings. We cease to be free beings. We all become robots. So that's not going to happen. So in our stubborn will of not knowing him and holding on to our prejudistic preconceived notions of who the father is and also who people are and who we are in our own darkness. We are not left alone. You know, Jesus, father planned it. Jesus done it. No, Holy Spirit has been poured into us right now. Holy Spirit is poured into us. You know, see, Jesus pitched his tent. Father pitched his tent among humanity in the person of Jesus. That is one thing. That is Emmanuel, God with us. Right? Jesus is God with us. Holy Spirit is God within us. Within us. So, 
you know that Jesus in one sense he pitched his tent among a broken world right and we did whatever we had to do to him we treated him in our darkness but holy spirit through the holy spirit why did jesus say it's good for me to go away because god accomplished in jesus something for us but god is not just satisfied in accomplishing things for us he is only satisfied when he is accomplishing things in us my goodness accomplishing things for us that is through jesus thank god for jesus then accomplishing things in us that is holy spirit because apart from the holy spirit okay good jesus did for whom all did jesus die everyone in this world first john 2 2 not only our sins but the sins of the whole world right so whatever god accomplished in jesus he is the corporate man and it includes everything it includes the whole cosmos but still things remain the same why god doesn't want to mess up with our free will but so has he given up on us and saying okay in jesus everything is fine i'm happy no 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 god is not satisfied oh in jesus everything is fine no god wants to transform this broken world god wants to transform us that's why he sends the holy spirit who lives within you he who is joined with the lord is in one spirit with him so he has become one with you he has become really one with you and so much so when he speaks it comes as your own thoughts as your own thoughts you know it's not like a booming voice from outside like mount sinai or it's not even like a human voice like jesus who is still outside but he has come within you wow in your innermost being in your innermost being in your innermost darkness where devil is trying to tell you all sorts of things you know you're not enough you're not good enough you're not this you're not you hear the still small voice within you you know you are my much beloved child i still love you i care for you you know when that when you listen to that when you listen to that impulse when you listen to that impulse of the holy spirit when you listen to the tug you know pull of the holy spirit to know the father to know the father and you move in the direction you move in the direction that is where you are becoming a mature son and as you become mature as you become mature as you move from nepios to hios you would be able to access the inheritance just like jesus access the inheritance wow what a glorious gospel we have what a glorious god we have in father son and holy spirit father he plans son he accomplishes the plan holy spirit makes that plan a reality in us that we would experience that reality we would experience that reality without the holy spirit we can never experience that reality that's what i'm saying disciples were with jesus but they ne- never really knew the father as much as they knew the father after the day of pentecost yes jesus was in front of them but they were still broken and they were still fumbling and Jesus often had to say hey how long will i be with you why can't you do these things you know they never got anything basically they were messing up so many times but after the day of pentecost you find the same bunch transformed why the holy spirit has come and brought the reality of the father and the reality of the sons kingdom and the reality of his resurrection power this is what holy spirit brought to the disciples to experience it without holy spirit we will never be able to experience reality the word reality is the word aletheia 
in Greek, which is translated truth. And the Bible says, Jesus said, the spirit of truth, the spirit of Aletheia will come and he shall lead you into all realities, all Aletheia. There are so many realities, realities of the Father, reality of the Son, reality of the Holy Spirit, reality of the kingdom, reality of the inheritance, reality of his presence, reality of his glory. Everything is real. But for us to be led into those realities, we have to be led by the spirit of adoption. Led, those who are led by the spirit of God are the huyos of God. Come with me to Ephesians 1 again. Ephesians 1 verse 11. In him, that means in Christ Jesus. In him, we have obtained an inheritance. In him, we have obtained an inheritance. Being predestined according to the purpose of him. Okay. So what are we predestined for? We are predestined for adoption. In Ephesians 1 verse 5. In Romans 8, you know, 28 and 29, we read that we are predestined to be confirmed to, make, to the image of his son. And then we are, whoever he predestined, he called, he justified and he glorified. Okay. I want you to keep those things in mind. Inheritance. In him we have an inheritance for which we are predestined. Yeah. So our predestination is to receive the inheritance through adoption. Why did he adopt us? Why did he predestine for adoption? So that we can receive the inheritance. Mature sons. Mature sons is about mature sons accessing the inheritance. This is adoption, meaning re reve revealing mature sons. So why mature sons has to be revealed? So that they can access the inheritance. Only mature sons can access inheritance. Nepios cannot. Hmm. Predestined to the purpose of him who works all things according to the counsel of his will, that we who trusted in Christ should be to the praise of his glory. In him you also trusted after you heard the word of truth, the gospel of salvation, in whom also having believed, you were sealed. You were sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. You were sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. Who is the guarantee? Who is the guarantee of our inheritance? Who is the guarantee of our inheritance? Until, until, the redemption until the redemption of the purchased possession to the praise of his glory to the praise of his glory right so there is a you know Praise of his glory in verse 12 also and then in verse 14 also. Uh, so the father's plan of predestination, father's plan of predestination unto adoption so that we can receive the inheritance is for the praise of his glory. Right? This is, this is God's plan. Plan and predestination of adoption. So that we can access the inheritance. When we access the inheritance, we will be to the praise of his glory. And the father planned this, son accomplished it. And we have this Holy Spirit who is the guarantee. We are sealed by the Holy Spirit who is the guarantee of our inheritance until, until the redemption, until the redemption of the purchased possession. What is the redemption of the purchased position? Okay. Come with me to Romans 8 verse 17. If we are the children of God, then we are the heirs of God. Joint heirs with Christ Jesus. Heirs of God and 
joint heirs with Christ. Heir mean inheritor, right? Inheritor. So, inheritor what? Inherit the inheritance. Okay, we have obtained an inheritance. So why have do we have the spirit of adoption through whom we cry out above father? Not just we know the father, not just we access the father as a son, but so that we can obtain the inheritance. That's the reason the spirit of ado adoption is given to us. Right. And uh, it says, if indeed we suffer with him, that we may also be glorified together. For I consider that the suffering of this present time are not worthy to the to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. Glory to be revealed in us. Okay. And Amplified says, in us, for us, conferred on us. For the earnest expectation of the creation eagerly waits for the revealing of the sons of God. <laughs> for the earnest expectation of the creation is revealing of the huyos of God. What is adoption? Adoption is nothing but revealing of the sons of God, which is what the predestination is all about. You know, Ephesians 1, you know, Romans 8. That's what the whole Bible is about. The whole Bible's message is about adoption. That's why I've written the book called Divine Adoption. I, I would really encourage you guys to, you know, get a copy of it. I think Amazon has opened its, uh, you know, delivery again. Uh, so you can purchase that book. You will find the link in the description below uh, where I have dealt in detail. So many people are asking, can you give us your notes, you know, some written notes that you have that you prepare for your sermon? Honestly, you know, I don't have notes. I don't preach out of notes. And, uh, you know, you can get that book if you really want something in written form. Get that book. It's in English and Tamil right now. The Malayalam version, Telugu version and Hindi version is getting ready. It will be out uh, in any time soon. So, yeah. Uh, getting back here. So, adoption, which is the revealing of the sons of God. This is what creation is waiting for. Creation is not waiting for Jesus to come back. No, 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 no. Creation is waiting for the revealing of the sons of God, which is adoption, which is the preordained, predestined, foreordained plan and purpose of God, of the Father, and which was accomplished in the Son, and the spirit of adoption is poured in us so that this thing will happen. Are you guys getting what I'm telling? My goodness. For the creation was subjected to futility, not willingly, but because of him who subjected in hope. Because the creation itself was delivered, creation itself also will be delivered from bondage of corruption into the glorious liberty of the children of God. Uh, for we know that the whole creation groans and labors with birth pangs together until now. Verse 23, verse 23 is what I want you to know. Romans 8, 23. Okay, why do we have the spirit of adoption? So the spirit of adoption reveals that we are the heirs of God, joint heirs with Christ. Just like how Christ inherits things from the Father, we are supposed to inherit things from the Father. So we are the inheritors. That means we have an inheritance, which we read in Ephesians. Until the redemption of the purchased possession, until the redemption of the purchased possession, we have the spirit within us as a guarantee, right? So I'm talking about what is that redemption of the purchased possession? That redemption of the purchased possession read verse 23. Now, not, not only that, we also have the first fruits. Remember last week's message? Christ is our first fruit. Not only Christ is our first fruit, Holy Spirit here. First fruits of the Spirit. We who have received the first fruits of the Spirit, even we ourselves grown within ourselves, eagerly waiting, eagerly waiting for adoption, eagerly waiting for adoption. What is that adoption? What is that adoption? Going to heaven? Oh, no. Redemption of our 
body waiting for adoption redemption of our body <laughs> i don't know how much more clear the scripture has to be it simply says we have received the holy spirit who is the guarantee he is, we have received him as first fruit but he is the guarantee until the redemption of the purchased possession what is the redemption of the purchased possession what is the purchased possession the body the until the redemption of our body he is our guarantee why only when this thing happens our our option is complete the step 2 is complete step 1 is completed in christ but step 2 we are still waiting for our option we have received our option through jesus but why does it say we are waiting for our option because we have the spirit within us who is quickening our body Romans 8:11 it the whole passage comes in the heel of Romans 8:11 the same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead shall also give life to your mortal body to this body so the holy spirit has come within us and the same Jesus who raised quickened Jesus and glorified his body he is within us giving life to our mortal body and as we are led by the spirit of god we are the huyos of god and as we are in that being led journey as we increase you know last week i spoke about the kingdom rising and maturity rising so huyos is about maturity as we are being led more and more more and more our maturity levels will increase our as our maturity levels increases the more and more the quickening act of the holy spirit will be revealed and so much so a generation will be fully under the holy spirit that is the level in which the waters have taken over swim deep right so the the spirit has taken over not only the sp- your spirit is in you but you are in the spirit right you have been taken over by the spirit you are fully led those are the mature sons of god and they when they are revealed when they are revealed creation itself will be redeemed from its bondage and corruption see what is this inheritance first peter chapter 1 verse 3 onwards blessed be the god and father of our lord jesus remember father of our lord jesus who according to his abundant mercy has begotten us again you know we are born again begotten us again to a living hope through the resurrection of jesus christ from the dead so we are born again begotten through the resurrection through the resurrection of jesus christ why why we are born again to go to heaven no 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 we are born again through the resurrection why to to an inheritance okay we have an inheritance right so to an inheritance which is what is the nature of the inheritance which is incorruptible undefiled and that does not fade away wow this is nothing but our glorified body okay to our inheritance which is incorruptible undefiled that does not fade away that does not fade away reserved in heaven for you i already told you that through the glorification of the flesh of jesus everything is already done so in that way our glorified body is already reserved in okay it is reserved in heaven for you the thing is you need not go to heaven to get it die and go there to get it that's not the greatest plan okay it is reserved in heaven for you for what you know who are kept kept by the power of god who are it is reserved for a particular pers- group of people who is that group of people who are kept by the power of god through faith for the salvation ready ready to be 
revealed in the last time so there will be a generation who will be kept by the power of god for them this inheritance this inheritance which is an incorruptible undefiled that does not fade away this reserve this inheritance which is reserved in heaven will be revealed in the last time will be revealed in the last time so you guys remember in romans 8 the glory that is ready to be revealed in us so that glory ready to be revealed salvation ready to be revealed you know uh, until the redemption of the purchased possession for the praise of his glory all these things are talking about the same thing you know the just like how joshua and caleb every israelite came out every israelite came out but not everyone received the inheritance right only joshua and caleb they were kept by god and they received the inheritance moses died so many people died so joshua and caleb did not say hey everybody died they did not receive the inheritance who are we no but they responded in faith through faith they were kept by the power of god so they were kept kept generation right they were part of that old generation but they were kept you know whatever was happening to them did not happen to them they their strength was remaining as 40 and they received the inheritance similarly there will be a generation who will be kept by the power of god who would receive the fullness of the inheritance others will receive it through resurrection but one generation will not go through that process but would be kept and they would receive and that is why holy spirit is given as the guarantee for that inheritance now let's read second corinthians chapter 5 for we know that if our earthly tent this house is destroyed we have a building from god house not made with hands eternal in heavens see that's the inheritance right that inheritance is reserved in heavens first peter 1 for in this we groan earnestly desiring to be clothed with our habitation which is from heaven which is from heaven okay it is reserved in heaven is ready to be revealed from heaven if indeed having been clothed we shall not be found naked for we verse 4 verse 4 verse 4 and 5 is what i want you to look for we who are in this so he is talking to not to dead people he is talking to the corinthian church right who are living we who are in this tent groan being burdened not because we want to be unclothed okay not because we want to be unclothed to be unclothed here and to go there and to be clothed there that is not what we are crying groaning for not because we want to be unclothed meaning die okay not because we want to be unclothed but because but further clothed we what are we waiting for not to be unclothed but to be further clothed right what is to be further clothed what is to be further clothed that mortality mortality might be swallowed up by life by zoe mortality might be swallowed up by zoe verse 5 now he who has prepared us for this very thing he who has prepared us for this very thing of being further clothed that mortality might be swallowed up by zoe for this very thing very thing of what of mortality might be swallowed up by zoe that mortality might be swallowed up by zoe who has prepared us for this very thing is god who also has given the spirit as a guarantee I don't know. We just need to read. We just need to read scriptures and believe it. We just need to read scriptures and believe it. What did this body and blood accomplish for us? 
that the blood of bulls and goats, the Passover lamb, couldn't achieve. The Passover lamb brought them out, and none among them were feeble. None among them were feeble. They were all broken, bruised in Egypt by the taskmaster's whip. But one night they partook of the Passover lamb. They came out. None among them were feeble. And forty years they were in the wilderness, rebellious, rebelling. In eleven days they should have supposed to enter Canaan and possess the inheritance, but they could not possess the inheritance because they were rebelling, 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 rebelling. Forty years. But even those forty years, when they were observing Passover, that Passover kept them hale and healthy. Forty years, their their dress did not grow old. My goodness, dress did not grow old. Their slippers did not wear out. That was Passover lamb's effect. What did the blood and body of Jesus accomplish for us? Take us to heaven. Yeah, take us to heaven. That's what. Let me tell you, those people who died in faith in the wilderness, not everybody was, you know, condemned. I'm sure many people will go to heaven, right? In Israel, from from that generation who stepped out. But so going to heaven is never the thing. It's about receiving the inheritance. But who received the inheritance? Joshua and Caleb. Joshua and Caleb, they were kept by the Spirit of God. They were kept by the Spirit of God. Right? Those who are kept by the Spirit of God are the ones who receive the inheritance. First Peter one. So, see, the body of Jesus, the blood of Jesus, have obtained us an inheritance, a glorious inheritance, which would reveal our adoption, which would reveal our adoption, for which the creation itself is waiting. So, the creation is waiting for a generation who would believe this and rise up. Through the spirit of adoption, and that generation has to arise. And let us ask Lord, what did Your blood purchase for us? What did Your body accomplish for us? Through Your broken body, through the glorification of the flesh, what has accomplished? Open our eyes to see it. Open our eyes to see it. Open our eyes to see it. In Jesus' name. Let's pray, Father. We thank you for your awesome plan, Jesus. We thank you for accomplishing that plan for us. And Holy Spirit, thank you for coming and indwelling within us, inch by inch, inch by inch. You are so patient with us, so patient with humanity, so patient with me, so patient with each and every one of us. In revealing the Father in our brokenness, oh, so that ultimately we would come to know You, know the Father, just as Jesus knows the Father. We thank You for this precious, precious privilege, Lord. As sons, we arise and we declare peace over nations. As sons, we arise and we declare peace and prosperity over nations. Strength. And hope over nations. Let the nations turn and look up to you. Let the nations turn and look up to you, and let them know that only in looking up to you there is hope. Only in looking up to you there is salvation. Only in looking up to you there is redemption. Apart from you, there is no hope for us, O、oh、Father. We thank you, Lord. But in you we have abundance of hope. In you we have abundance of hope. In you we have abundance of life. We thank you. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you so much. We, I just want to give you a quick update. You know, thousands, thousands, thousands of people are being fed、uh, in the last couple of months through you are loved, and、uh, thank you for your generous donations. You know, we are we are partnering with you in you know reaching all these things. Thank you for your generosity. 
every penny. Uh, one thing about you are loud is we do not use your funds uh, that come into you are loud for administrative purpose, meaning giving salary to the staff who are doing those things. Nothing of those th things will be covered in that. For that, we have other, you know, funds uh, who, which takes care of that. Every penny that you send give, goes directly to that. So I would encourage you to partner if you want to give for that COVID uh, care uh, project that's happening through you are allowed. Uh, you can find the account details of you are allowed right now. You can give there. Greetings from you are allowed. One thing that we have learned during this pandemic is that people are in need of us more than before. Knowing that we are doing few projects to reach out to people who lost their livelihood. So far, we have provided provisions to more than 10,000 people. In the last week alone, we have given provisions to more than 1,000 families. We have reached out to gypsies, we reached out to tribal people, we reached out to people from the leprosy colony, differently abled people, transgenders. Also, we are helping migrant workers who are stuck in Tamil Nadu. We help them get into the shelter and get their train and reach back their home state safe. And also we help them in other modes uh, to reach their houses. And we help them, if somebody wants to stay back, we are helping them in finding job, also providing for their needs until they get the job. We have also launched a project uh, to freely recharge their mobile until they have you know, proper uh, work. Every day, there are hundreds of such requests coming to us and it is our duty to serve them. Please join hands with us so that we can make these people's life better. God is good, you know. Whenever we see brokenness, we don't see it as a sign of end times getting ready to leave. We ask God to empower us through the power of the Spirit and through natural resources to get into the mess and do something about it, right? So whatever we do, the giving, everything will have eternal significance because God has not given up on this creation. And what we do right now in this broken world will be reflected in the age to come. And how we steward our resources, money, time, everything, relationships, how we are stewarding these things will be reflected in the age to come also. Okay, so God bless you. Thank you so much for being generous. Uh, see you all soon.